The A330 Neo is a pretty incredible machine. It's chock full of cutting edge innovations, making it one of the most efficient aircraft on Earth. Plus, its ultra roomy cabin makes for an exceptional passenger experience. But there is one area in which the jet is more modest than remarkable. It's order book. Fewer than 300 Neos have been sold to date, and with orders slowing in recent years, many have written off the jet. But like the old saying goes, good things take time. And as far as the Neos concerned, good things appear to be on the way. In the face of mounting market pressures, Airbus has made key changes to the jet. And as a result, the Neo seems poised to experience a sales boom. Let me explain. Now, before hopping into it, I bet you've noticed that airfares are getting crazy expensive. But at the same time, people are losing their jobs and analysts are warning of a recession. This weird dichotomy shows just how topsy-turvy the global economy has gotten. And that volatility seems to be here to stay. This has had a major impact on stocks. And JP Morgan thinks that the S&P 500 could sink another 20% this year. As a result, people have sought alternative ways to store their wealth. Enter Masterworks, today's sponsor. Masterworks buys expensive art and breaks it into smaller, affordable shares that are registered with the SEC. This isn't crypto or NFTs. This is actual fine art from guys like Picasso and Banksy. Last year, art prices rose an average of 29%, even in the face of economic headwinds. So it's no wonder that Masterworks has nearly 700,000 users. Of course, past performance isn't a guarantee of future results, and this isn't financial advice. But Masterworks seems to be doing something right. Demand is so high, in fact, that they have a waitlist to join. But my viewers can bypass that line. Simply check out my link in the description to do so. In order to understand why the NEO is primed for a renaissance, we must first dissect its value proposition. Launched in 2014, the plane is Airbus's direct response to the Boeing 787. Its two distinct variants, the A330-800 and 900, seat anywhere from 220 to 300 passengers, and it's perfectly suited to fly long-haul, medium-capacity routes. In order to compete with the Dreamliner, Airbus has fitted the jet with a whole host of technological improvements. Of course, as its Neo moniker implies, the biggest innovation is its massive Trent 7000 engines. These power plants adopt several key innovations from the Trent XWB that powers the A350. As a result, the engine achieves an 11% fuel burn reduction compared to the Trent 700 it's replacing. Now, this new engine might be the NEO's most obvious upgrade, but it's far from the only one. I caught up with Rodrigo Lezama, director of widebody marketing at Airbus, who walked me through some of the NEO's more subtle but equally important changes. First up, the wing. The previous wing was catering both the 330 and the 340. We were constrained by the fact that it was a wing for two different airplanes. Yep. Now it's a wing that's only for the 330 NEO. Brand new wing. Mm -hmm. It's a 64 meter wingspan design, which means it's four meters more than the CEO. With the higher span and the redesign that we did, we managed to get a higher aspect ratio. In addition, the NEO uses advanced materials extensively throughout the airframe. The upper belly fairing is now a composite part and it's been redesigned as well. The rib, number one of the center wing box, which is the part that helps you basically hold the wing to the fuselage, has been redesigned as well with advanced materials to provide more stiffness. You have the sharklet, as we call it, which is inspired from the A350 design. And it's made of composite as well. Also, uh, we added more materials in other parts, like in the empennage or on the flooring of the aircraft. So whenever we could, we really look at the, at the structure and said, can we optimize it? Can we make it lighter? Can we add more advanced materials? And that's what we did. All in all, these improvements make the NEO 14% more efficient than first-generation A330s, 
25% more efficient than the 767 and put it on par with the 787. The changes have also increased its range, which now stands at 7,200 nautical miles. Naturally, many airlines have deployed it on long-distance routes, like Seattle to Seoul and San Francisco to Lisbon, and it's done an exceptional job in that capacity. With a dispatch reliability of 99.5%, airlines are consistently turning a profit with the jet. But while the plane is quite capable, its orders have slowed in recent years. Its backlog has grown by just 50 units since first delivery. On top of that, the rival 787 is outselling it by a count of 6 to 1. You see, the NEO was kind of late to the party. Like I mentioned before, the program was launched in 2014. The 787, on the other hand, went on sale in 2004, giving Boeing a full decade head start to build its backlog. Over 1,400 Dreamliners were sold by the time the NEO entered service, saturating the market for long-haul, medium-capacity aircraft. Now, this isn't to say that the market has completely run dry. Airlines like Aer Lingus, Iberia, and Cathay Pacific all fly A330s on long-haul routes, and the NEO ought to be their natural replacement. But there's no denying that the demand for new aircraft is finite, and today, there are simply fewer customers who are shopping for planes in this segment. So, it seems like sales ought to continue to slow down, not ramp up. And yet, the NEO is poised to defy that logic. How can that be? Well, simply put, Airbus has revamped the NEO to tackle an overlooked but growing market segment. You see, the aviation industry is in a much different place today than when the NEO first launched. Demand for travel is at an all-time high, but airlines have struggled to keep up. One particular area of concern involves flight crews. Today, it can cost over $100,000 to earn a commercial pilot's license, which has scared many people away from a career in the cockpit. The upshot is that an industry-wide pilot shortage has taken hold, with the pilot pool staying stagnant as passenger numbers increase. To make matters worse, airport infrastructure has also remained static. Taxiways and runways are more crowded than ever, which has led to major service disruptions. And not a whole lot is being done to fix it. Case in point. India's aviation minister recently said the country needs 320 new airports to keep up with demand. However, the government's only committed to building 100. To cope with these constraints, airlines have started to rethink their wide-body strategy. In the last year, we've seen several airlines pull their A380s out of deep storage, with some now flying on inter-European routes like Amsterdam to London. Meanwhile, US airlines have put a growing number of 777s on domestic routes, like LA to Denver and Dallas to Miami. This tactic has helped carriers to scale total available seats and keep up with demand while pilot and ramp space remain limited. Now, this is an adequate short-term solution, but it's far from ideal. Narrow buddies like the 737 and A320 are explicitly designed to operate six or seven flights a day, and are specially engineered to handle the stresses of repeated takeoffs, landings, and pressurization cycles. In contrast, wide bodies are envisaged to operate just one or two flights a day, and don't come with these design considerations. If airlines keep treating their wide bodies like narrow bodies, it'll cause extra wear and tear and lead to excess trips to the maintenance hangar. This isn't just expensive, it also pulls the aircraft out of service where it could be making money. Airlines have cried out for a more permanent solution, and Airbus has heeded those calls, evolving the 330neo to tackle the problem. While the plane was first certified in 2018, Airbus hasn't stopped tweaking it. Each year, they've poured 150 million euros into its continued development, and recently, those efforts have made the plane a more compelling short-haul workhorse. To learn how Airbus achieved this, I sat down with Francois Kubica, the chief engineer for the A330 program. He shared that, first and foremost, they had to focus on the landing gear. We needed to, to reinforce them. We changed the tire, the brakes, the wheels, and the time between overall. It was 10 years, so we were able to move it to 12 years, so that's, that's pretty good. In addition, Airbus has worked directly with Rolls-Royce to modify its engines for short-haul operations. We've redesigned uh, the HPT blade, and it's a big enhancement because we are doubling the life of the engine. Yeah. It's a big, big improvement. Today, the, the, the basic thrust for the engine is 72K. 
what we are developing with Rolls-Royce is low water loss ratings, TSTIK. It is less damaging for the engine. Mm -hmm. So in terms of uh, durability, in terms of you know, shop visit, it's much better. Finally, they've put a renewed focus on predictive maintenance. We wanted this aircraft to be more uh, connected. We want this aircraft to talk. We are able to observe the behavior of the aircraft and to anticipate any issue we may face. It's extremely interesting for preventive maintenance and depending on, on the way you use the aircraft, you will have a customized maintenance program, uh, which is also very helpful for, for the airline because if you are not using you know, the full uh, takeoff weight capability, they will have some relaxation in terms of inspection. So you know, it's this kind of thing that is making a lot of savings for the airline. All in all, these changes have one simple objective, ensure the NEO can fly more cycles without needing extra trips to the shop. And this is a win for all sides. For the airlines, it gives them a modern, efficient widebody that can actually handle the stresses of short-haul operations at a time when they need it most. And for Airbus, it unlocks a new competitive edge against the 787. An analysis by Lee Him found that, for routes under 4,000 nautical miles, the two jets have nearly identical fuel burn characteristics. But when you factor in the NEO's high cycle optimization, it should deliver a lower total cost of ownership. As such, the NEO will become a preferred choice in this emerging market segment, helping to boost its backlog and leveling the playing field with the Dreamliner. But while all of this tinkering has allowed the NEO to tackle shorter missions, just as important has been a change that Airbus didn't make. We do not have a new cockpit because first of all, we wanted to keep, you know, what we call the cross-crew qualification, set time rating in terms of training of the pilot is quite important. And also there is the, uh, the, Air, the Airbus brand. And, and today, if you're entering into a, a cockpit, uh, we'll have difficulties to understand if it's an A320, an A330. So we want really to keep that brand. You see, the A320 and A330 have near identical cockpits. This enables mixed fleet flying, where pilots can fly each aircraft back to back. The cockpits are so alike and the planes handle so similarly that it can sometimes be easy to forget which plane you're actually flying. But you don't have to take my word for it, just ask an Airbus test pilot. On a uh, regular week here, you jump from a 318 to a 350 to a 330 to a 380. So you jump from one aircraft, one type to another. And the magic of Airbus is that we've worked on the, um, the flying handling qualities to be pretty much the same. And so after 10 minutes, when you fly in the morning at 320 and the afternoon at 350, after 10 minutes of flying, you just forget about the mass behind you. Given these similarities, it should be much easier for airlines to actually swap the NEO onto shorter A320 routes. Doing so shouldn't disrupt crew scheduling, and it won't demand a lot of extra training. The same can't be said for the competing 737 and 787, as their cockpit architectures are quite different from each other. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. Sure, this all sounds compelling, but how is this actually playing out in the field? Are airlines actually deploying the NEO on shorter routes, or is all of this just a hypothetical? Well, take a look at Kuwait, for instance. On one end of the spectrum, the airline operates the world's longest A330 NEO flight between Kuwait City and New York. But at the same time, its NEOs serve almost a dozen local destinations that are, at most, a couple hours away. They fly to Cairo, Beirut, Baku, and Dubai just to name a few. Suffice it to say, Kuwait has embraced the plane's newfound versatility. The same is true for Delta. It's placed the NEO on both domestic and international routes, flying missions as short as two and a half hours and as long as 12 and a half hours. But perhaps the best example of the NEO's newfound capabilities lies with Cebu Pacific. In 2022, Cebu doubled its fleet of A330 NEO aircraft and deployed them on short inner island hops throughout the Philippines. And over the course of the year, its revenues jumped by 261%, with the NEO being no small part of that success. At the end of the day, Airbus has turned the NEO into a Swiss army knife of a plane. It's no longer just a long-haul workhorse. It's now a legitimate high-capacity option for shorter missions, making it ideally suited for today's market conditions. We've already seen airlines embrace the jet in this capacity, and Airbus seems confident that more and more will do so in the coming years. So while the plane might have a modest backlog right now, 
don't be surprised if that isn't the case for much longer. So, what do you guys think? Do you also think the Neo is poised for a comeback? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Thank you so much to Rodrigo, Francois, and Jan for lending their expertise to this video. If you consider yourself a true avgeek, I highly recommend you check out my full interview with Francois, which is currently live on Patreon. We spoke for nearly an hour and took a deep dive into the technicals of the Neo, and as the chief engineer, he is obviously incredibly knowledgeable, and I learned a lot by talking to him. So please consider checking out my Patreon if you're interested in that discussion. Oh, and one last thing. You see the sweatshirt that I got on here? I actually designed it myself. It's pretty cool, right? Well, I unfortunately am not selling them, but as a thanks for making it to the end of the video, I'm going to give some away for free. Right. Simply leave a comment below telling me what your shirt size is and what your favorite thing is about the A330, and I'll pick a few winners. Thank you so much to my patrons for their continued support, and as always, if you learned something new today, leave a like and subscribe to keep learning. And until I see you again, don't forget to look up.